this is John Black Supercharged. Uh, this is just a disclaimer just to let you know that uh, this video is not intended to be imitated, uh, no parts of it. Uh, it should not be copied or done by you or anybody. It's just for educational and maybe entertainment purposes to watch. That's it. I don't condone anyone repeating anything in the video. Here to show you how to make some uh, methyl bromide or bromo methane. Uh, you can see here I got everything chilled. I got the glass chilled, the ice bath here. Uh, inside this three neck round bottom flask, so I got a uh, 40 milliliters of methanol, which is one mole, uh, 50 milliliters of water. I got uh, in, in this equalizing funnel, I have 56 milliliters of sulfuric acid, which is also one mole. And I'm guessing I'm going to try to make some methyl hydrogen sulfate. I got a star bar on, basically taking the same stoichiometry as I did with the last video where I did ethyl bromide. Uh, only difference is I'm splitting the water up. When I add in the uh, sodium bromide after this, I'm going to put the sodium bromide in water and drip it in instead of putting it in as a solid. Uh, we do have better luck here because sodium bromide is actually more soluble in methanol than it is in uh, ethanol. It's you can see I'm not going too slow. Actually, I'm going kind of fast there, but I have every, I put everything in the freezer, even the glass, so I got that much left. Got it spinning in there. Still nice and clear. Everything's clear. So I'm going to drip this in and uh, I'll get back to you after it's dripped in and warmed up to, you know, uh, room temperature. And then we'll add our sodium bromide solution and distill off our product. It's that easy. All right, here's the deal. I got my stuff in here, right? My alcohol and my sulfuric acid. Now up here, I have some sodium bromide in water. And I couldn't get it all into going to solution, so I added another 20 milliliters of hot water, and I'm going to dissolve that. There's 50 milliliters of water in there. 50 milliliters of water in there, so that's like 120 milliliters total. Got my setup here for distillation. I'm just going to do a simple distillation, you can see, but I got a lot of. I got this one little condenser, and I got a spiral condenser, and kind of has the a gram condenser, and I got a water bath. That's like a 400 millimeter condenser. Now, when I added this stuff in before, to make ethyl bromide, it was no big deal. But when I added in this time as a salt, it really fizzes. I mean, it goes to town. So that's why I'm putting it in the water. You can see it's already starting to turn orange, like red. I just started dripping it in. That's because it's oxidizing the bromine, the bromide to bromine. I'm just going to drip that in. When I get it all in there, I'll distill out my product. All right, I got the flame on. All right. As you can see, I had to put a bigger X column on there. It wasn't getting hot enough to, to make anything. You can see I got it at a good boil now. Starting to reflux, you know, going up the. You can see in between the two condensers, I got like a drop there. In the back, you see it? You can see up here, this is starting. I got ice in that little tube there. You can see a little ball. 
starting to come on there. And also, the pot. I don't even see it. Uh, anyways, there's a couple drops in there. You can't see it. I just blasted up the heat. You'll see it starting. See there? See, that's in between the two condensers it's making it. So you definitely need the bigger X. I mean, even at a boil, I, don't, I have a heat like blasted, man. That's the receiving flask. You can see it I'm getting some good production. can't see it but you can when it hits the puddle you can see it see, I got a reflux now all the way to the top almost right to there that's as high as I'll take it. I don't want to take it up past the bigger X. You can see now it's starting to really, really make a puddle in there. Coming over at a good rate. That's good. Now I should have put some water in there, ice water, to cap it because this stuff is real dense and it would sink to the bottom and the, you know form two layers. And then the ice water on top would keep it nice and cold, you know. You can see there's no nothing in the top there. I don't, I don't let anything get up there past that bigger X. I really wish I put water in there so it formed two layers. It's all just one layer. I don't, I don't know if that's pure. I mean, obviously it's not pure, pure, but I don't know if that's mostly my product or or what. It's not forming two layers. You see up here my outport to go out to the atmosphere. You see, I'd put a Kleenex in there, so it, you know, it doesn't build up pressure, but it keeps the stuff in there. You know what I mean? I don't smell anything, not a thing. I can tell that my drip rate's going slower. Before it was going crazy, but good. It's starting to slow down. Pot's getting more clear. I'm surprised I have that much to tell you the truth, so it shouldn't be much longer. Oh, it's coming over so slow. I just jacked it up to about 68. Made everything come over that could. You can see it's a yellow now. actually collected a lot there. It didn't turn into two uh, different layers though. It's not biphasic. So I don't know if that's just I can't see it or what the deal is. So I know there's some water in there. There's what I got. It's okay, I don't see where the line is. Someone throw some table salt in here. Uh, this time I'm going to try baking soda.
Well, there's one thing I didn't try. That was that water. That was my what I was supposed to do first off. Oh, that definitely, you can see it, I don't know, right here. So I'm going to weigh that up and see what the difference is, what it boils away. All right, now if you take any college classes or read any college textbooks, this is always the, the mechanism they give you. You start out with HBr, you protonate, now you have a water molecule. If this was isopropyl alcohol and you had a secondary carbon, you'd have a carbocation. You don't here, you have a primary, so the bromine comes in and does an SN and kicks the water off and re you know replaces it. And now you have your product. Now, I, a lot of people, that, I don't know if that reaction really works that well like that. I see people, and I did in my video too. Is I made the methyl, I made a ethyl hydrogen sulfate first by adding the alcohol and the, and the sulfuric acid, and I did that here too. And then the bromine probably does an SN with the hydrogen sulfate and kicks it off, and you have methyl bromide. But I don't know if that happens in this case. Um, when you when you throw in the sodium bromide uh, as a solid. Man, it, it, it reacts big time. Uh, when I did it with the ethyl bromide, it didn't. So this time I added water to it when I added it, <laughs> instead of just adding it as a solid. Uh, it, did, it didn't make it react less, you know what I mean? It wasn't so vigorous. Um, so you can think of it that way, or you can think of it this way, where you're... You know, sulfuric acid and the salt, just like sodium chloride, you make hydrochloric acid, but you make hydrobromic acid. Uh, and then you come up to this reaction. I don't know which is happening, what is going on. You're either doing this and doing an SN with that, or you're doing this and you're coming back up here and doing that. Either way, it all leads to the same thing. Uh, my limiting reagent was sodium bromide. I only used a half a mole, uh, so half a mole of methyl bromide is 27.7 uh, milliliters. I got 22 milliliters. Now I didn't wash anything or clean it. <clears throat> uh, if you want to know how to do that, go to my ethyl, how to make ethyl bromide video. And it's the same way, except you're going to have to, you know, all your glass, you're going to have to put in the freezer. All your water, you're going to have to make sure it's almost freezing because it'll boil. If you put in water that's four degrees Celsius, you know what I mean? That's barely above freezing. Uh, you know, you'd have to put some uh, sodium bicarbonate in there to get that out of there, and maybe some water, and then maybe some salt water. And then when you got done, maybe put some magnesium sulfate in there to dry it out, and then redistill it. Uh, another idea would be to bubble this into instead of distilling it out, bubble it straight into really, really cold uh, diethyl ether. That way you have a more higher boiling point, you know what I mean? And it's easier to keep uh, control of, you know what I mean, when you're washing it with the, the sodium bicarbonate and the uh, water and the salt water. You're going to have to basically put it in the freezer. As soon as you shake it up, put it back in the freezer, you know what I mean, until you get it completely done. Anyways, uh, always remember, science is great.